So, hi together. Today we are doing a talk about deploying and managing SCADX schedulers in Cache OS. Um, yeah, and this also applies to other distributions. So now we want to just introduce us who we are. So I am Peter Young. Um, I'm doing mainly the package maintenance, testing, and infrastructure at Cache OS, and I am test engineer. Vladislav is mainly doing the software development of Cache OS and like our Cache builder and also the welcome screen and others. Piotr? Uh, hello, I'm Piotr. I'm kernel maintainer in Cache OS. I work as academic teacher in Poland. So, um, what we do, we started in May 2021 with Cache OS as a hobby project. We are an Arch Linux-based distribution and focus on performance and user experience. Also, we have shipped about uh, the last few years out of three schedulers, <clears throat> like Bore, Kakule, BMQ, and TT. Uh, we have adopted SCADX in late 2023 and helped a lot with the integration of SCADX into distributions and also shipping this to users. And now we want to share the experience to here and yeah. Um, I'm gonna skip the next two slides, which mainly introduce the, the Cashios project because of the time. And Piotr will now talk about the integration with Systemd. D. Uh, hello, uh, everyone again. I was, uh, uh, I will, say a few words about our implementation method in Catch OS. Uh, at uh, beginning, we didn't have any uh, method of auto start to schedulers and there was only one way to run scheduler, just type scheduler name in terminal. It wasn't a good solution because we cannot start scheduler at boot and in this version we have also so problems with logs. <clears throat> so, uh, I decide to choose system D service to allow users run scheduler on boot. And my first idea was to create a separate service for each scheduler. And that wasn't a really good idea because too many schedulers could be confusing for users. To enable uh, scheduler on boot, we should start one service and if we want switch to another, we should stop previous one and start next one. So as I said, there was not good for users, so I decided to make, make it a different way. So uh, I decided to, cre decide to create one parametric schedulers and how it works. A very important option for this uh, solution is condition path exists. You can uh, start your uh, system with another kernel, for example, long time support, and service won't fail, just won't start because condition was not met. And very important uh, thing about this implementation is config file. And service read config file from etc default 
config. You can set here scheduler and flux. And when you start with default settings, uh, BPF LAN will be start. But now I would like to thank Pedro Rigi, son of my teammate Andrea, because he introduced a very cool option. We can override our current settings, but set a new variable, and if we set variable and restart uh, service, new scheduler is running, and we, if we unset variable and restart uh, settings again, default setting will be used. Uh, as I said, we have some problem with logs. In previous version of schedulers, um, schedulers displayed a bunch of log statistics, and if we want to use main journal uh, the namespace, it will be a big mess. So I decide to create separate log namespace for schedext, and we could check logs in this way. But thanks to Tejun, we have now a very cool improvement for uh, STX schedulers, uh, STX stats. So now statistics are not displayed anymore by default. But if you want to check statistic, uh, all you have to do is just add monitor and interval parameter. Interval just amount of seconds. For example, half seconds, two seconds, five seconds, and so on. And uh, statics with statistics will be displayed, and we can check what is going on. But I know that console management could be very uh, hard for beginners because it's very hard to use if we just begin our uh, adventure with Linux. So in CatchOS, we have prepared some graphical user interface for that. We have very cool uh, soft called CatchOS Kernel Manager, and in this uh, soft software, you can build your own kernel in graphical user interface. You can uh, add custom patch, uh, patch, custom fix, and so on, but the more important thing is that you can set uh, scheduler in graphical user interface. You can also add flex profiles and now my teammate tells something more about uh, benchmarks. Hi together. So um, in, the, uh, in the Cashios community, BPF land and LAVD is the most used scheduler so far and we have seen with BP <clears throat> with BPF land improvements if, uh, of inter interactivity and especially under heavy load scenarios, the desktop stays responsive, which is good for workstations. Um, it shows a better FPS stability too, so the difference between high or the high and low FPS. 
Also it has hybrid support, which like at newer CPUs, like the AMD ones, which has only one CCD with cache, and also ENP cores. Additionally, it provides predefined low latency, uh, predefined profiles like for low latency scenarios, gaming and power safe. And they choose different options for the scheduler. Mm, Shang Wu already showed what LEVD is for. It's mainly focused for gaming. Um, it shows improvements in 1% lows and average FPS compared to the EBDF scheduler. I have, I have also a benchmark in the next slide. Um, this has been used by the Steam Deck in the future and has been also rolled out by some handheld gaming distributions like the Casio's handheld edition, Bayside, and others. Additionally, it provides the autopilot feature which changes between different loads, the scheduler, how it acts. <coughs> so here we can see a slide between uh, EVDF and LEVD. LVD in the average FPS it reached in Baldur's Gate 3 um, around 5% higher FPS, and it, this was equal to at a 1% lows and 99% So STX Loader is a scheduler manager which basically provides a debus interface to switch the schedulers with some tools like Power Profile Steamen. We have been in contact with uh, the maintainer of Power Profiles Demon about the integration with, with different profiles, and they generally agreed. And in the future, we will work on a configuration file for Power Profiles Demon to provide a seamless integration of SCADX into Power Profiles Demon. <clears throat> the problem is, in general, launching SCADX schedulers or managing a system D file is problematic. Um, because it requires pseudo permissions, and if I want to change, like for a game, um, want to change the scheduler from EVDF to LEVD, um, the user need to start the scheduler with, with pseudo permission, permissions, and this is inconvenient. So this can provide a dynamic scheduler usage be, depending on the workload and profile, like CPU governor works. <coughs> the DBoss interface provides several features, like start and stop the scheduler, get the current running scheduler, the current mode, and support the scheduler. It gets started via a systemd service and waiting for signals. It can be also used to switch between uh, STX and EVD, like the default scheduler, and yeah. So, now questions? Yes? Ah, sorry. So uh, you mentioned the comparison between uh, EVDF and yeah. uh, LAVD, and I, uh, I think uh, you should pr probably also look into tuning EVDF. Like what we see is like the default e EVDF, it has like a lot of context switches. I think it's four or five times, I forget the exact amount, but we were, we were seeing like large number of context switches. So you have to increase the base slice uh, you know, to reduce reduce that amount. Otherwise, the overhead is is quite high. Um, and then the other problem with EVDF that we see is the uh, eligibility uh, feature in EVDF, which for for which there are some new uh, fixes. So EVDF definitely has problems, but with tuning, it performs. Uh, it, it can perform well. So I think you should probably do the those tunings. And then rerun compare, <coughs> comparison and see how uh, how LABD is doing. Yeah. Um, hi, Joel. One remark: the the, ba the base slice length, right? I remember um, Youssef Smat talking about the Chrome OS. Uh, um, uh, is it, this is uh, this is something you can do from Sys, uh, uh, CT, um, C CFS, right? Yes. It's not a patch. It's uh, you, you set a different uh, base length, so that it's something that the distro can do and uh, and ship like that, right? It's not. It's not a patch. Okay, no, want to clarify that. Yeah. Also, already doing this like at like, uh, at a customized kernel, which EVDF con uh, includes a scheduler, but in this test case, we just wanted to test also stock EVDF versus stock LEVD to provide 
proper results and not, hey, there is tuned, there is tuned, and then maybe there comes some confusion in the benchmarks. Right, because in, in fact, they're not using EVDF at all. Uh, this is a, a, a comparison to, uh, to make it resonate with the audience, but they use Bore from uh, Masahito uh, from the presentation prior. Uh, that's something that I forgot, but it's also worth mentioning that the Cache OS by default does not have an EVDF they use. Uh, yeah, it's provided as a second kernel, but as default, it, it's the Bore kernel used because it's very good for desktop usage. And, yeah. It's pretty funky in the Cache OS land today.